is just served here. So with the, be it a link or any content which is coming is going to get loaded here. So now if we go back and uh, we say okay grab a link uh, get this mynews.org which I registered for the feed. So I grab the news from there and you can see over here someone has put a javascript colon alert xss. So that has been posted as, as a link and so I, as soon as I click on interested news item I get cross site scripted or DOM based cross site scripting. Uh, combination of attacks uh, is happening over here. The information is coming from untrusted sources. It is going via XML. The XML will get loaded in the browser. The parsing will happen. During the parsing, it won't do any validation and load the content and I click the link and it's going to do a, a XSS. A similar thing is possible with uh, what you have over here is uh, a mashup application where you say, okay, these are the two application, eBay, show me eBay on, on, on Google Maps and then show me a profile uh, of, of the person who has posted this, this particular product, for example. So you have this JEX profile here, which has been posted here. So now, as soon as I click on John's profile here, uh, it will pop up and show me that profile here. Again, a DOM based stuff is happening at the back end. I click the link and get cross site scripted. So these are the mashup hackings. Again, uh, over here, what you have is uh, information coming from untrusted sources. And there is a possibility of making a cross domain direct callback. That's, that's pretty complicated, but it's, it's pretty much possible where your proxy will not come into picture at all. Okay. Uh, the third, uh, the next attack is a CSRF. So you have a cross-site request forgery, but this cross-site request forgery, we are talking about uh, XML stream, AMF stream, JSON stream, etc. We are not talking about the traditional cross-site scripting here. Uh, so uh, briefly, the, there is a same origin policy where protocol host and ports are matched, and it is possible to set a document dot domain to a parent domain if uh, if a current context is in a child domain. So that's again, again one of the abuse which can happen when you someone will change. Uh, the parameters on your document uh, dot domain and then top level uh, TLD uh, locking down helps in doing the sandboxing. So that's the, the fundamental where browsers are following same origin policy. But then there are abuses out there. Application running in, in maybe a subdomain. So you can load something in a subdomain which get loaded uh, by CSRF. What if document dot domain set to about dot blank. So there is a pseudo URL uh, mechanism there or DNS rebinding uh, if a DNS or IP resolve to one to many. So there are some attacks there and then you have already bypasses there via script, image, iframe, uh, action tag of form, etc. These allow you to make a cross domain calls. Uh, so CSRF is possible with the web 2.0 stream. So DOM is making a backend calls uh, over here with, with, with the JSON or making a call to the XML or et cetera. So we try to see that, that whether you can do a CSRF over JSON or you can do a CSRF over XML and we figure out how uh, it's, it's quite possible as well. Uh, so what is going to happen is say for example in this particular condition, uh, application user will go to the, this particular trading portal and say, uh, will do authentication. So once it's authenticated, it is still browsing around, it will go to the attacker site and attacker will send uh, a CSRF payload which is in HTML. That HTML get loaded in the browser and as soon as it gets loaded in the browser, it force uh, XML call. This is not a typical get or post where you are posting things on a name value pair. You are posting XML content and then that order will get placed. Now this XML content can be can be JSON, this can be uh, AMF, this can be typical XML, etc. So, so for example, this form. What we have done over here is we created a hidden value, input type hidden, and when we put the whole JSON envelope here and say value equal to foo, and then we say document dot by dot submit. So when you do this, what is going to happen is this kind of a request is going to get generated in the browser. So browser will generate a backend request to JSON dot service dot ASHX, and this can be to any domain. You don't restrict it to your own domain because it's, a, it's an action tag. But two important features over here, you can see the, the content type is text plain because the form cannot generate text slash XML or stack slash JSON. Uh, and then you can see the whole XML, oh, whole JSON, the way we want to do a CSRF is generated at the back end, you can see equal to foo is posted by the browser. Now, what we have analyzed is there, 
there is a serialization which ends right here. It say okay I am looking for I will start and counting a serialization as soon as my all or all curly brackets are over I will not process the remaining string. So, this is this is not a well formatted JSON though it is get processes processed on the server side and we get this kind of a response back over here. So, this is how you can do a CSRF on the JSON stream or for example, we have XML. So, same fundamental you can apply to XML and what we have done over here is we put a half of the envelope here and then remaining half of the envelope here and then we say document dot by dot submit and the equal to sign like version equal to 1 dot o will get injected by the browser. So, say for example, let me show you a demo here. So, you, you have like a trading portal over here. You are right now on mytrade.com. You can see it is a mytrade.com and you are passing your username and password here. You say, okay, John, John is my username and password. You say, okay, it's a JSON stream which is coming back and you say, oh, your user is authenticated. So, once user is authenticated, it is trying to place an order for, uh, for a stock. It say, okay, place an order for symbol Microsoft and some quantity. So, I say, okay, 25 stocks of Microsoft, post that order. So, the cookie will automatically replay here and you get a response back which say, okay, this is my request actually. This is my request which is XML stream. You can see order for 25 has been placed and I get my response back here. Okay, so this is my response. This is my request. Everything is fine and I am, I am my order is placed. Now, this is mytrade.com. Now, you visit mytrade2.com. You can see over here it is a mytrade2.com which is completely different domain over here and you are on the login page. This is just essentially to post a link I have posted else. It is completely happened without your consent at the back end. So, you click that link here and you can see mytrade.com login and the whole XML has been generated. So, you visited mytrade2.com without your consent, without your knowledge. Uh, since you are already authenticated on mytrade.com, XML stream generated from your domain and injected into the mytrade.com domain and your stock, whatever stock you want to place has been placed by the browser. Now, if you look at the source of the page here, okay. So, here is a page source where you have text plain hidden XML version equal to this and the remaining envelope has been post here in the in the XML stream. So, this is automatically the DOM will call the, the, the function will get call cross domain will get generated and you get cross site you get cross site request forgery uh, on that particular piece. So, now you have captcha or whatever you are putting in and if the stream is JSON then you have to make sure that you send a token and then process the token at the at the back end to protect yourself against these sorts of attack, attack vectors. Now, one of the thing over here is that uh, the server side have not checked our content type. If it is was checking that ok, I am expecting XML and, and, and in my content type it is text XML then and then you process then this attack would not be gone successfully in. But a uh, lot of libraries, lot of uh, developers are not checking that whether it say ok, whatever is coming on this page is going to be the XML. I do not want to check whether the browser is generating a text XML or text plain. And finally, coming to the DOM reverse engineering. Uh, so, what now we are trying to do is uh, it is pretty easy to uh, reverse engineer DOM what is happening in your DOM. We have already seen two tools here uh, DOM scan and DOM tracer. Uh, so, it is easy to do a reverse engineering if a JavaScript uh, then possible to debug. If it is using flash silverlight then again you can do a decompilation and try to analyze them and it leads to possible vulnerabilities or exploitation scenarios. Now, one of the observation which we have made here is that that with the 1.0 to 2.0 application what we are seeing is like we had just traditional layers like utility, access, business, app presentation. But with the 2.0 you can see this kind of a yellow layer when in a JavaScript certain part is a presentation layer some of the business logic which is supposed to be on the server side is now uh, moved to the client side and then some, some of the application are making a direct data access call from the Ajax as well over a SOAP pipe. So, now we have uh, the shrink of this layer which allows attacker or analyzer to see what is going at the back end with something which was supposed to be executed on the server now executing in the browser as such. Uh, so, this is where we can do a analyzing of a JavaScript and uh, access logic bypassing. So, say for example, this is our application where we are doing a Shiraj Shiraj, we are logging into the application here. So, my username and password has been sent here, etcetera, etcetera. So, the page has been loaded in the DOM here. 
Now I go ahead and say, okay, show me, uh, show me, show me, I'm starting DOM tracer. I want to see what is happening at the back end in the DOM. So I just started the DOM tracer here. And then I go ahead and click a bank info function. And you can see in the bank info function, some number is going. So I'm interested that what is happening when I click bank info. So in a get bank info, this particular function called some kind of encryption or is happening or encoding is happening. And then it takes my username and craft that back to this uh, application and application will revert back. So these are some of the business logic which now you're seeing and these kind of a tokens which are getting generated here. So now I'm interested. So now what you can do here is like little little JavaScript shell here, which is uh, essentially comes with a firebug. Whatever functions are here, you can start accessing from here directly. So I say, okay, forget, like I want to make a get bank Shriraj. So I do that and you can see as soon as I run this function, it'll make a get request here and it'll going to show me. Now what if I ch start changing values here? So I say, okay, Nisha, and you can see the value changed here. Now I can start receiving others account information here. So instead of a Nisha, I say, okay, Hamil. So now I'm seeing his banking information. So these are the functions. Now you don't have to log in in some cases because these functions are already exposed in your DOM. So you can start making these DOM functions. So these are some of the interesting things which we are seeing in 2.0 application. Another, another uh, thing which we are leveraging is, uh, is, a, is a debugger. So you have a nice firebug has a nice debugger here. So now we are making this same function call, same discovery here. So now we say, okay, show me that function. So now in the firebug, you can see get bank info here. And I put a breakpoint here. I say, okay, I'm interested in changing certain things here. So I say, okay, set up a breakpoint here. And now I say, I click the function. Okay, so now you can see what is the parameters over here and I can start changing here instead of a Shriraj if I put a Nisha here. So at runtime, I'm changing the values in the DOM, which you can do using Firebug debugger. Or you can do a decompilation attacks as well. So you say, for example, here is a sample Silverlight file. What you can do is you download the file and there is a XPA, XAP file. You take XAP file, it's nothing but the archive. It's a zip file, changes extension, extension to zip. Uh, unzip the file here and then you can start seeing all JavaScripts, all DLL, etc. And if you are more interested, take the DLL and pass it to the uh, RAID gates or LUTs decompiler or any other decompiler and you can actually start seeing the actual source code of the page as well. So now if this particular piece of information has something which is interesting on the server side, then actually you can decompile and try to analyze the file. So our focus of these analysis would lie on the on the on more on the DOM. So we try to see uh, DOM calls going from the Silverlight to the DOM and DOM to the to the JavaScript, etc. So these are the uh, some of the attack vectors, be it uh, DOM-based cross-site scripting, stealing variables, uh, hacking mashups, hacking feeds, a uh, uh, lot of different two auto components, which is leveraging widgets and such. So there are countermeasures out there uh, depending on. So first and foremost is when you develop, deploy, design, or analyze application, do a threat modeling or threat analysis from the DOM perspective. Uh, sometimes you need to do a JavaScript code analysis, which you can do using uh, DOM scan or any other tools, uh, source of information and dependencies analysis, which one needs to perform. Uh, if you're doing a proxy level call, say you are, your application is actually calling a proxy, proxy will go out fetch information and tunnel that information, you need to do a filtering there. Whatever content coming from the cross domain should be not should not be trusted for your end user. You do filtering and then pass on. And this is very important. Do a content type check or restriction. Like before processing a content on a server side or a DOM side, make sure like you have a content type is text XML and you are getting the text XML content. Uh, and then securing a DOM call, so document.write, eval, et cetera, whatever calls you're making. So that's pretty much countermeasures. We can discuss more countermeasures. Uh, you can do a lot of academic analysis on it, but the, the, in a nutshell, this is what we want to achieve. We want to have our DOM call secure. Uh, we want to have our content, which is coming into the DOM, 
uh, filtered or not 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 any any explosive content which is coming uh, into Dotto application and. Uh,